Hey, what's up guys, Nino here. I wanted to show you guys today what I might do, or actually what I often do, when I'm finishing a shot in terms of some creative options. Uh, this shot right here, taken in Hawaii, um, I finished it up in terms of all the cleaning, you know, like I get all the skin work done, there's a little bit of grain on it, which I actually enhanced because I liked it. Um, just overall finished the utility work on the shot. And of course, at this point and in your edit is when you're excited to do color work and and really kind of bring it home and make it your own you know so yeah there's some color correction i did in raw to get started but that was just some white balance work um so when i get when i when i get to this point and i get excited about what i can do next i look at the shot to see what's happening in it so it gives me some you know some idea of what direction i want to take it for example in this little canopy, if you will, that I was in on the mountains here in Oahu, um, there was a beautiful waterfall and the light was more or less coming from above, directly above. It was actually mid-morning, but it was so hazy um, and the waterfall was the only break um, from the jungle canopy of light. So essentially I had light coming from above. So I definitely want to keep that in mind because I think I want to add a light effect to it, right? To kind of make it feel like it's a little bit more dramatic. But with that in mind, when I think about adding some kind of cool light haze or something like that, the first thing I have to think is, well, that's going to reduce contrast. So I need to immediately increase contrast, but also think about my color as well. So one of the first things I tend to do, especially on an image that this has pretty good contrast in it, but I've kind of made it a little bit softer in my raw, just kind of, you know, brought the shadows back a little bit um, in some of the raw work apart from white balance. That's really all I did. Um, so one of the things I start with is going to be a gradient map kind of wash. Ignore that one. That's just the default that popped up. But I saved this one earlier because I kind of liked it. And when I put this gradient map together, um, I was thinking, obviously, you know, jungle themed. I had this green tone. I had this sort of muted brown tone in the middle. Um, and I moved these, these uh, stops around on my gradient map to kind of figure out how I want the shaping to be. Um, based on the light, based on, um, you know, just the feel of everything, how I want it to look. Now, right now, this is obviously not right, but bear with me. This is just one of the great ways I love to color grade because it always adds a little bit of contrast when I do. Now, let's say I like that gradient map. Most of the time, I will switch the blending mode on that gradient map to soft light. See, now that adds a ton of contrast. So what I do is immediately I'm going to change the opacity. I'll start with 50% and take a look at that. Now if I turn that off and on, you can see I've added a ton of contrast to the image, but I've also added a little bit of a color wash. The shadows went sort of a green tint, kind of neutralizing some of the warmth in the shadows, which reflects the jungle foliage and her outfit. So I sort of like that. Still a little bit strong, so I'm going to make it 40%. But I'm on the right track because now I've got this, you know, very out of camera looking image. It's cleaned up, it's edited, but very out of camera. And now I'm already starting to give it some flavor. So I kind of like where that's going. I think I'm going to add another layer on top, probably a color balance layer. Um, it's very different than selective color. And I probably will use both to be honest with you. Uh, but I'm going to play around with this and see what I get. I'm always going to start with my mids. That's usually where it pops up anyway. I'm going to see about adding a little bit of red and maybe a lot of yellow. This is going to kind of take the blues that are dominating everything and, and shift them a little bit. I'm going to leave that for now. I think that works. I'm going to pop open a selective color. Most of the time when I get these adjustment layers added, it's just so I have the tools ready. I don't know exactly what I want to do yet. So let's see. On, we're a little bit on the yellow side for me. <laughs> so I'm probably going to take some yellow out of the reds and add some magenta to the reds. That's very, very subtle. Maybe in the neutrals, we'll add just general warmth. Two and two on the magenta and yellow. Maybe three and four. Yeah, because I don't mind the warmth. I like the warmth. It, everything is going to get hazier here in a minute, so I'm going to overdo it a bit. Maybe something like that. Maybe more yellow, less red. No, something like that. You see how color work, of course, is you know a creative process, and so many different ways you can go about doing it. I'm doing this sort of manual. I'm not using you know Infinite Color Panel or other plugins or even my own plugin. I'm kind of just feeling this out. So. With the green in mind, I might add a little bit of cyan and a little bit of yellow to the shadows and see what happens. Uh, I sort of like it, but I lost a lot of warmth. Maybe, maybe I'll add a little bit more warmth, maybe just a bit, a little more yellow. Okay. So went from, let's turn those off, went from, again, 
straight out of camera image after cleanup and editing and all the utility work. And now we've added a ton of contrast. Now, this is a lot of contrast for me. Um, a lot of people do like higher contrast shots. So remember, everything I'm showing you now with color work in this creative process is extremely subjective. So it's not to say that this is how you must color, but this is for an example of what I may do because I'm going to continue on here and show you what I'm talking about. So next up, what I might do is pop out of levels, which is what I consider to be my mastering layer, if you will, my adjustment layer. Immediately switch that to luminosity blending mode. That's going to allow me to kind of master the overall contrast, brightness, and the shadows, and the output, and everything um, in a manner that's not going to shift too many colors because I'm in luminosity blending mode. I'll get to that. That tool is ready to go. Now, I'm going to go back down to my stamped layer below the color work because there's a few things I need to do that are very important to the order of the layers. So for now, right now, the first thing I'm going to do is consider adding no, I think I'm going to do the, I'm going to do the flare first. Now a flare, the one I'm thinking is more just a haze. I'm going to get the light source coming from above, right? I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. When you have, when you want to add fake light effects, whether it's really stark specular ones, um, or really subtle hazes, you have to consider the actual light source of the image. Where is it coming from? Because it needs to feel believable. Now it could not be simpler. I take a white paintbrush usually the biggest photoshop will let me do you can also draw in an area with the lasso tool and blur it i mean there's a million ways but for the most part i'll just get a circle a real soft brush 100 you know zero percent hardness and just paint on a brand new layer and i have that now initially that's of course way strong but what's great about these sort of hazy big giant fuzzy um raster layers is that if you hit control or command t um, you can modify them. You can push and pull them and, you know, bend them any way you need. And they don't really matter. It doesn't matter if you make them bigger or smaller. They may get a little pixelated, but you don't see it because it's so blurred. So you can hold down shift if you want to distort it. You can see how there's a potential light source here that could look cool from above. Now we don't need a real small light source like right above. It looks like there's a, a ball glowing above or it's coming from the sun. So it has to be kind of big. So I'm thinking something like this, maybe a little straighter. Something like that. Maybe pull it down just a little more, a little hazier. Yeah, okay. Cool. Something like that. I'm going to choose that. And then, of course, at this point, now you have opacity. You know, 50%, 70 75%, something like that. Huge difference, obviously. I'm going to go to 65. Again, I want believability. Um, to give you a counter, if you were to make another layer, and decide you want the light source coming from here. Okay, so you have something dramatic looking, but it's confusing. Um, your eye, your brain processes it like something's not right. Your brain knows something isn't right. And that's the highlights that are hitting her don't match the light source that your brain is trying to pretend is there. So suspension of disbelief. When you have the light source coming from the real light source direction, it helps with that reality. Now on the levels, on the levels, I'm going to come up here and increase the brightness a bit. I'm going to crush the shadows a little bit, add some, and then change the output. I'm going to change the output on both, which is kind of a type of compression. I bring in my highlights. I bring in my shadows a bit. That's just going to help kind of marry it all together and compress it a little bit. It might be a little strong. We're starting to lose our highlights. Something like that sort of works. But I feel I want some more color. And since now that I have the light source in there, the the lack of color, lack of contrast that it creates from the top anyway, um, sort of, you know, brings it, it makes it more obvious to me that I have to do some more work. Also, now we have a very obvious brightness coming from the top and getting darker to the bottom. We can actually compensate that because we want people to see the whole image. This is just my philosophy. You want to see the whole image, but you don't want to necessarily, um, you know, feel like it's the light source isn't directional. So one thing I might do is take a curve layer, brighten it just so, change it to luminosity blending mode, invert it. I'm going to get a, uh, a gradient tool, <laughs> ideally something straightforward like this. Let's see what direction we're headed. Yeah, I'll go the other way. And then we'll do something like this. And that's going to, well, maybe a little bit more, something like that. And then I can change the opacity to that just to bring up the bottom part of the image a little bit, just a little bit. Maybe the gradient map needs to kick in a little stronger. Yep, that works. 
bit more color. You see how the process goes. You just keep playing with this until you find something that kind of works. And now that I've done all that, I can, I can get a little more light source. So if I were to group all these edits, I went from an image that looks, again, clean, straight out of camera, beautiful. And now we've added some drama and atmosphere and life to it. And, you know, I, I have already edited this image before. Um, I kind of recreated what I did, but I still had the same idea. I knew I wanted that drama to, uh, to come out because I had a beautiful spot and there was a lot of drama, but it was a very hazy day and it was very straightforward. So sometimes when I'm on set, I think, let me capture it as is um, and then see what I can do in post. I don't always add special effects in post. In fact, most of the time I don't, but this was a shot that really lent itself to it. So I wanted to show you guys what I might do. Thanks for watching.